Welcome to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Well, here's another video coming from the sunny south. If you love palm trees, this is a video for you. When visiting any resort in the Caribbean, you're sure to find these four palms. They are the most popular and for obvious reasons. They're very attractive, they have no real pest problems, and they take similar growing conditions. Today we're going to look at four of the most commonly grown palm trees throughout the Caribbean. Now, coincidentally, none are actually native to this area. They all originate from the Western Pacific or from the Indian Ocean. All four palms are pinnate species. They are somewhat salt tolerant. And we'll start with the most salt tolerant, the coconut palm. All four of these palms can be grown as house plants if you have the room. But to be honest, the humidity needs and the size of the coconut palm are not a likely choice for many of us. The first palm we'll look at is a stereotypical palm tree. It's Cocos nucifera, the coconut palm. It can reach a height of up to 30 meters or 100 feet. The leaflets on the coconut palm tend to be much stiffer than the remaining three palms. The coconut palm is a self-cleaning palm, which means that the old leaf bases do release from the trunk. You can see by the scars left behind. It does form a lovely gray trunk. Also grown for its fruit, has many other applications, including building material, using the fronds and leaf bases for construction. This is what the flowers look like. And then the young fruit and then finally the mature fruit. The next palm, Adonidia morellii, sometimes called Christmas palm or Manila palm. As the name suggests, it does originate from the Philippines and on average it can grow 8 meters or 25 feet. The Adonidia palm has very dark green, wide leaflets, making it a very attractive palm. It can look much thicker much fuller. The Adonidia palm is a moderately fast grower and when planted at different heights it tends to maintain that until they mature. Sometimes called the Christmas palm because the red fruits look like Christmas ornaments on a tree. Now the fruit are not edible but they are very attractive and colorful. It stays medium height The next palm is the Arica palm, Dipsis lutescens, also called the butterfly palm and the golden cane palm. This palm originates from Madagascar. It has very graceful looking foliage. This is a clumping palm, which means that the main plant does put out offsets from the base and sometimes along the trunk. Now they can reach up to 8 meters or 25 feet or more in a secluded location. When the Eureka palm is planted as a solitary palm, it grows much better, not competing for water and resources. Now the Eureka palm has very fine feathery leaflets, uh, rapidly growing and it does produce multiple offsets and it can form quite a thicket. When grown in more shade, the trunk tends to be more yellow and the more sun it gets, it turns more gray as it gets more sunburned. Another self-cleaning palm, as the fronds do fall off, it does form these lovely rings on the trunk. It's a fairly smooth, hard trunk. Now the fruits are very attractive as well, and they are actually quite tasty. Now there's not much flesh on them. And the last palm is the pygmy date palm, Phoenix robolinii. The Phoenix Robellini originates from Southeast China, Vietnam and Laos. Um, typically quite a slow growing palm. The Pygmy Date Palm is the slowest growing of these four palms. It typically reaches a height of 2 to 7 meters or around 23 feet and it takes many many years to reach that height. The leaflets on the Robellini Palm are very fine and softly textured quite often planted in multiples, so you have two, three, four, and sometimes five trunks. 
When the pygmy date palm is planted as a solitary palm, it grows much better, not having to compete for food and water. This is not a suckering palm, although it is a phoenix palm, so it does hybridize with other phoenix palms in the area, which can affect genetics. They are very slow growing, uh, they are not self-cleaning, and they do have nasty spines on them, so when pruning, uh, take extra care. The fruit is basically insignificant, uh, very small. Um, I have seen birds eating it, but beyond that, they just litter the ground and you have many, many seedlings forming around the base of the parent plant. And the last three palms also make good house plants, that is if you have the room. These palms are fairly straightforward to grow and they take similar growing conditions. They will take moderate light and varying degrees of humidity. They have no obvious pest problems and they will take just about anything you can throw at them. As always, thank you for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, happy gardening!